I'm Callie Lewis. And I'm John P. Welcome back to even more Talk Mobile. 2013! That's right. We're talking mobile and photography. Will the phone replace our point and shoot cameras? You know, it's, it's getting there. Uh, for a lot of people, including myself, the, these new cameras, especially 2013, have been at that point where you can actually seriously at least consider it. Even for a serious photographer, I think you can, you know, leave your point shoots at home. It's it's getting there. Every Apple keynote for the last three, four years has had Phil Schiller do an entire segment on photography. Not on music, not on anything else, but on photography. And it's getting really impressive. We we have F2.0 cameras with optical... F19. F19 with optical yeah. image stabilization now and a tiny, thin mobile device. We have ultra pixels. Ultra pixels. What's an ultra pixel? <laughs> what is an ultra, ultra pixel is larger pixels on the sensor. So here's yeah. a big debate. Like you have the optical image stabilization and the good sensor quality on the Lumia, for example, and on the HTC phone. But then you have Samsung and Apple saying, we just want you to take good photos everywhere. So these cameras are really good at certain things, and the other ones are more generic. I want to be able to take the phone out of my pocket, take a picture as quickly as possible, as good as possible. I don't want to mess yeah. with settings. I don't want to have to go back and edit it later on the phone, even if if that's an option. I just want to be able to pull it out, take a quick picture of something that might not be holding still, my kids, <laughs> never hold still, and then put it away. Remember, we're talking mobile, not just phones. Mm -hmm. So right. that also includes tablets, and it includes new specialty devices, like, for example, the Samsung Galaxy camera. Right. First and foremost, it's a camera that happens to be running a smartphone operating system. And then actually Samsung has been, not backporting, but backporting. That, that, <laughs> not backporting. That, we're not going to call it backporting, but let's call it backporting. Uh, the features from that version of its operating system onto its latest phone. So it's really interesting to kind of see it come around full circle. You know, you guys are all, I think, photography buffs, and I'm sort of the normal person here who just likes to take pictures sometimes. I'm well, with you. Yeah, exactly, Kelly. And I think what the big thing I see is, look, for smartphone manufacturers, they are all, without exception, putting a lot of effort into the cameras, in, in, which is something we did not see in Blackberry years forever. ago. Let's talk though about uh, let's talk about real professionals or people who are avid amateurs. They will only shoot with a DSLR. How is this encroaching on that world? I, I have this, this, there's this conflict, right, in mobile devices. Is that, for example, the cameras are getting, the phones are getting thinner. Cameras don't like low depth. They want to have you know a lot of depth for their lenses. And I think that's the compromise that still gives us the room for the DSLR, is that the thinner they want to make them, the more compromised the lens will be at the end. Yeah, ultimately, a DSLR is, will never go away. It, it's a tool, and it's extremely flexible to different lenses and abilities. But we're getting there. So but let's move from the actual DSLR versus point and shoot versus mobile conversation into the actual sharing of these photos that you're taking with auto instant upload and all of that, those kinds of features that we're seeing. Uh, Kevin, what? how do we sh you know, protect our privacy in these kinds of situations? You don't. <laughs> Just expect you, you accept so. that at some point in your lifetime a picture of your butt will be on the internet somewhere. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So, so does that mean it. we should just take it now and get it over with? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that's my theory. Been there, done that. Greatest thing I ever did. And the other thing that's a challenge, and I'd like maybe John's opinion on this, is photo services like Instagram, hugely popular, excellent for sharing, fantastic communities. They destroy the entire quality of the picture because they yeah. don't save the original image. Yeah, it, it's down yeah. sampled to 640 by 640, right? Those those types of services I don't think are made for photographers. You know, if you if you want something that's going to really preserve your image, you've got to go with something like uh, uh, Smug Mug, for example, that up lets you actually upload raw images, full size uncompressed images, and there's a community of people who like to look at those images in very high resolution, you know, high color depth, etc. But that is just a few of us. Niche, yeah. For the rest, they're perfectly happy with a 500 by 500 pixel highly compressed image that's very fast for downloading to mobile devices on the go that you can put all kinds of layer 20 filters on and say, that's cool. It's not a photo, <laughs> it's art. Upload. It's sort of like the whole argument with Polaroids, the original Polaroids back in the, the 60s and 70s. It, it was a trade-off where, I mean, sometimes it was blurry, that the resolution wasn't very good, but it was instant and it was cool, you know? And that, that was something that 
it's different, and that's what's always great about photography. So you're saying check your lighting with Instagram. Yeah, right. <laughs> but th there's no perfect way to do a photo. There's only creative tools, and a, a true person who's into photography will use tools appropriately for certain situations. All right, guys, where are you putting your photos? How are you backing them up? How are you securing them? How, what do you think about privacy? Let us know about all that down below in the comments. We'll see you all week long. I'm Callie Lewis. I'm John P. Bye-bye, guys.